Robots Radio presents Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. Hey, I can look at myself naked. Are you stoned or something? They tried stoning me, my dear. It did not work. He likes to create his own sauce. Well, did you sleep with a man who also slept with mom and grandma Catherine? What? You slept with dad? All right. Which one of you sardines called this meat? Whatever, Major Loser. Let the party begin! Welcome to Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. The time loop that you can't get out of, and are you sure you want to? That's Chad Echowitz. That's Simone LaRue. And our special guest, the mistress of my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Confess a murder. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hey, how's it going? So We're good. How you. how are you? I am doing splendid today. It, Looking uh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I put it for on our listeners for who don't watch on YouTube. Like this would be this would be the episode to check out our episodes on YouTube. Like <laughs> yeah. just for this look, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's not so like we're not even going to describe it to you because you need to go and see it online. Yeah. Like, you know, follow us on YouTube and check out Miss Confessor Murder because she is stunning. She has done what we never do, which is prepare, and she looks <laughs> fan friggin' tastic. And yeah, so so how are you? Thank you for coming onto the podcast. How, how how what is your spooky Halloween vibes? Like, what do you enjoy about spooky October month? Well, when it comes to October, I do nothing but watch horror movies and horror TV shows. Oh, yeah. Um, and this year I've had my heart broken on so many occasions already. Oh. So I'm, I'm hoping that we get some really good horror movies coming out. <laughs> <laughs> this year has been a train wreck. Oh, mm-hmm. man. You don't need oh, to tell wow. us. <laughs> But so, I'm talking so, about horror movies, so <laughs> yeah, not just general go. life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what would you say is your h- favorite horror movie? I know it's quite oh. a big ask. Yeah. Gosh, I will have to say a Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is a good classic. Um, fun fact, actually, I watched that movie for the first time when I was three years old. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> that so is. You started was, young. Yeah. <laughs> I was traumatized after that, <laughs> but I still kept watching. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad that you're like, so it's, it's sort of like a formative thing of your being in the fact that it was installed to you, whether you wanted it or not, from a very young age, from three <laughs> years old. And it's just continued now and, and, and led you to this bright future. <laughs> oh, yes. And if you want opinions, I got them, but... Here we're gonna be nice. That's right? what we're all about. <laughs> yeah, we we say we're gonna be nice. The the whole sort of uh, you know facade of the podcast is that we're nice about movies, and we are for about like ten minutes, and then yeah. we're just really mean. So so you know we'll 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 direct you to say nice things, but generally not gonna happen. Just go nuts. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Simone? What's your favorite horror movie? Because I don't think we've actually ever sort oh of laid God. this down, have we? I don't know. Like you know, again, I guess it depends on like what you're feeling Mm -hmm. um i think the one i keep coming back to to like watch is sinister Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that being said i feel like i recommend mandy to every single person i meet (laughs) yeah that is i mean i haven't seen mandy and we have very different feelings about sinister maybe maybe you can settle the debate for us yeah how do you feel about sinister how do you feel about it i it's okay. Loved it, actually. Yes! Ha! Take oh. that. <laughs> so I watched it in a dark room all by myself with the covers like this. No. Oh, Just, yeah. That's the only yeah. way to watch it. Like, <laughs> I was not prepared. Oh, girl. No. no. <laughs> I, was, I was jumping like a foot away from my bed after I watched it, and I was running to that light as soon as it was over. <laughs> Not it's a lot one of, of those sc- movies where, like, afterwards you definitely have to watch like a sitcom or <laughs> like a child's movie or something just to, like remember that there's good in the world. <laughs> well, yes, and it's it's a lovely nightmare, you know, mm. just watching that movie. Beautifully so. said. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Well, shall we shall we discuss some not so great horror movies this week? Uh, Simone, what are we doing this week? 
This week we are doing Sam Raimi's remake of The Grudge, and we are doing In the Tall Grass by one of my faves, Joe Hill. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. And I am so ready for this. Um, <laughs> well, we'll ask everyone what they're drinking in a second, but I think, Miss Confessor, if you want to choose the order of film which we go in, mm. do you want to do uh, In the Tall Grass first, or would you prefer to do um, The Grudge 2020 first? Um, we could talk about The Grudge so that we can end on a high note. Ooh, okay. ooh, that's some some hidden opinions right there. There you go. I mean, I don't disagree with you. I completely <laughs> agree with you in terms of which movie is better of these two. But uh, yeah. Okay, so what is everyone drinking? I mean, please, yeah, you go first. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have this water bottle full of lemon drop and... Damn. Um, it is a 32 ounces, exactly. Which, oh my goodness. If you are European, it's that's about what a whole liter almost. Of... Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I I was I heard ounces and I just like yeah. blanked. It's <laughs> like Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm way too American. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Even my boyfriend could like gets me confused when he talks, talks about kilometers and Celsius. <laughs> Can I get a conversion, please? Most of our audience is American, though, so mm -hmm. really we're the problem here. Yeah, exactly. I think you it are really, the problem. <laughs> it really speaks our to the American system making too much sense. Well, we all know that the world should be revolving around America, so everyone get <laughs> get with the program already. Start using ounces. <laughs> Wait, it doesn't already revolve around America? I thought it did. I'm very confused now. <laughs> that's, that's just like what we like to tell ourselves at night before we go to bed. <laughs> oh, God. And how about you, Sabai? What are you drinking? Uh, falling back on my old favorite, just a whiskey. Mm-hmm because it's late here so I can't I don't want to have like a sugary cocktail and then like be buzzing the whole night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially because you got work in the morning as well uh, that's from home <laughs> who cares it's fine no one's gonna see you you don't have to turn your video on <laughs> and what are you drinking uh, so I, I I am drinking a nice beer again from the from the student collection and this is a 61 deep uh, a pale ale oh um I thought so the butch. <laughs> I don't know a name like 61 deep doesn't sound butch to me at all um, <laughs> I wasn't gonna depends say on how it. hard you like it <laughs> <laughs> I mean this is this is pretty much exactly why I chose this beer because of the name and I was like I'm gonna let them do the jokes on this one I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them turn the wheel in 61 deep um, <laughs> but it is it is quite nice it's very tasty and uh, I basically picked it for the name so there you have it <laughs> all right Shall we talk about the grudge? Okay. All right. I'm talk us through it. Here we go. <clears throat> Detective Muldoon, played by Andrea Riseborough, has just moved to a new city after the unfortunate death of her husband. She and her son, Burke, played by John J. Hansen, wanted to get away from all the painful memories and start fresh. On her first day at her new precinct, Muldoon is partnered with a stoic man named Detective Goodman, played by Damien Bashir. They get called out to a mysterious car crash down by a largely abandoned service road. In the car is a dead and rotting corpse of one Lorna Moody, played by Jackie Weaver. The beat cop tells Muldoon and Goodman that Moody was an assisted suicide facilitator and that she had ties with the Landers house. This shocks Goodman because a couple of years ago, he worked the Landers house case. This was a double, homicide, uh, double murder homicide where the mother, Fiona Landers, played by Tara Westwood, killed her husband and child and then killed herself. The case took such an emotional toll on Goodman that he refuses to work on the new case and transfers it over to the FBI to deal with. But Muldoon is not easily cowed. She decides to se uh, separately investigate the case, first by looking over the old files of the Landers murders and the history behind the house. The narrative then basically splits into two other stories. First, you have the Mathesons, who currently live in the Landers house. They are an older couple, played by Frankie Faison, who plays uh, William Matheson, and Lynn Shea, who plays Faith Matheson. Unfortunately, Faith is really ill and has only become more and more sick since moving to the Landers house. It has become so bad that William can't bear to watch it anymore. So he calls Lorna Moody to help, her, to help her commit suicide. Unfortunately, the dementia is so bad that Lorna refuses to help. However, she agrees to stay in the house for a couple nights just to try and see if there was anything she could do. She then starts to see some freaky deaky shit and she, decide, and she dies in, her, in the car crash mentioned above. 
Faith also kills her husband, and then she cuts off her own fingers. Secondly, you have the Spencers, who had dealings with the Landers house a couple of years before the Landers moved in. Nina Spencer, played by Betsy Gilpin, no, Gilpin, and Peter Spencer, played by John Cho, uh, were real estate agents with their own firm. They were trying to sell the Landers house, but we were having difficulties getting the owners to sign the agreement. They were also having a baby, but unfortunately, the baby was diagnosed with a disease that would leave the baby severely disabled. On the way back from the hospital, Spencer decides to drop by the Landers house to try and get the closing signatures so that they could proceed with the sale. When he gets there, no one is home except the daughter, who is about eight years old. Her nose starts bleeding profusely, so Spencer takes her inside to clean up. That's when some freaky deaky grudge stuff starts happening, and Spencer goes home and kills his wife and their unborn child. In her investigation, Muldoon realizes that something is seriously weird in this house. She needs uh, answers, so decides to go talk to Goodman's ex-partner, Detective Wilson, played by William Sadler. He became so obsessed with the case that he used to stalk the Landers house in the middle of the night. That was until he tried to kill himself by putting a gun in his mouth. Luckily, he survived. Muldoon goes to speak to him and he reveals that the origins of the weird things going on in the Landers house stem from, the ja- from, stem from what the Japanese call the grudge. People die, uh, where people die in horrible situations surrounded by anger and hate, the anger and hate can linger in the place where the death happened. Wilson believes that Fiona Landers brought the grudge over from Japan and that's why these murders keep happening. The only solution is to burn the house to the ground. So that's what Muldoon proceeds to do. She is harassed by the ghosts during the process, but she's ultimately su- successful. Or so we think. The end. Ooh, Ooh spooky spooks. <laughs> Um, before so we scary. before we lay into this movie, <laughs> what uh, what was your cliffhanger, Chad? So it has to be this one, and it's the bit where Goodman and Muldoon are in his house, and he's just like laying on real thick about sort of you know chatting about life and and death and how hard it is to be a cop, and he's drinking, and she's kind of listening to his wise words, and it's all just nonsense. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. What did we think? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I guess we'll we'll start nice, and um, my would say that it has a strong cast. (laughs) Yeah, great cast. Um, Some of the horror, my horror favorites in this movie actually are Lynn Shay and yeah, uh, always she, a pleasure it, to see her. She everything about every time I see her in any movie, I am like glued to the TV screen, just yeah. wondering what she's gonna do. Yeah, she is really, really creepy. I and mean, I think, like, if you see her in a horror film or you see the film was produced by Bloom House, you know you're on for a banger sometimes obviously this movie is the yeah. exception that proves the rule <laughs> oh yeah and i would also have to say john cho is yeah another strong... it was really cool seeing him i i have to tell you something it's a, <laughs> it's a secret about john cho oh i have a huge crush on him i mean who could blame you <laughs> yeah how could you not <laughs> like you know, every time he's, he shows up on any movie, I'm just like, oh, daddy. <laughs> Especially he had those like real cute, like real estate agent glasses in this one. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he, oh, that, oh. the intellectual yeah. vibe he's got going on exactly. in this movie, it, yeah. um, it's working. You know, oh, yeah. he's a cutie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just really funny to think like he, 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 he stemmed from like Harold and Kumar vibes to this. Yeah. Like mm. it's crazy the glow up from this guy. Oh yeah, he he I, knows yeah. how to command the the scene. Like, he really does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, I mean, he has like such great like <laughs> such attractive vibes in this because he's like this really caring husband who's in a difficult mm-hmm. situation with his wife, and then he's like so kind to this incredibly creepy child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, actually that's a good question. What would you guys have done in this situation? Okay, so you're now John Cho. And uh, you've mm-hmm. walked up to the Landers house and you see this really fucking creepy girl there and she's refusing to speak to you and then her nose just bleeds like Niagara Falls. What do you do? I mean, like, what can you do? Because you can't be like, oh, clearly this is the ghost of a murdered child that I don't know <laughs> anything about. Like how, and presumably if he's the agent of the sale, like he's seen the house before and he's spoken to the family. Mm-hmm. So like, 
I mean, I get it. I understand. Like you can't take the kid away from the house to fix their bloody nose. So you have to go inside and I don't know, but even me, like if I was looking after this kid, I'd be like, I need to get out of here. This kid is fucking weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't really <laughs> talk to children, but if I did, <laughs> oh, really? I would probably throw my heels at the stupid bitch and run away. <laughs> mm. Because there's no way in hell I'm getting anywhere close to that girl. <laughs> <laughs> and you would survive and I would be dead. Yeah, yeah. So who is right in this situation? Look, yeah. I'm blonde. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to die eventually in the horror movie one way or another. <laughs> Yeah, and and let's be let's be fair. You're you're unmarried and uh, you know living in sin, so you have to die. You have to. It's the rule. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Well, it's I would be favorite. there. For, I would be there for Simone for moral support. Thank you. <laughs> That's but sweet. ultimately, I, you understand what, like I need car? to die. You don't have to. You don't have to be a hero. You know. Mm -hmm. You can. You can let it happen. You can be <laughs> devastated. Yeah. Just show up at the Fine. funeral. Just survive, please. <laughs> Someone else, someone's gonna tell your story, right? It's <laughs> there you go. And you and you would do a much better job than Sam Raimi did in this film. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I didn't hate this movie. Like I thought okay. some of the scares, like some of the shots and stuff were really good. Mm -hmm. Um I like some of like the visual storytelling was really, really well done. There were a couple mm -hmm. times where I was like, oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. It just didn't feel grudgy to me. No. If that makes sense. No, it absolutely. felt like any normal paranormal haunting thing. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I needed like the creepy Asian child there. Yeah. Um, or I don't know. It just didn't feel very grudgy. No, I completely agree with you. I mean, it, like, look, there are some good, like, jump scares. And I think this is the, f this is like the first time in a really long time that I've actually been frightened. Um, mm. I mean, a lot of that is because we're dead inside, uh, you know, <laughs> three, three, three horror junkies such as ourselves. We don't yeah. get scared by anything anymore. Um, but I did actually get a couple of good frights in with this one, which is lovely. But mm. also they relied a hell of a lot on jump scares for those yeah. frights. There was no, like, tension building. Um, yeah. you know, like they're like in other films where you're just like, you can feel yourself tense. And then like, after the scare's done, you're like, oh wait, I need to relax my shoulders now and just like stretch <laughs> out. And there was just none of that in this situation. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know, like good possible scares, just do better. You're a grudge movie, yeah. right? Yeah. I feel like it really over relied on those jump scares. It kind mm. of had the same vibe as La Llorona. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it. I think if had they approached the uh, the scares or just kind of led into it with suspense and a little bit mm -hmm. more mystery, I think it yeah. would have saved at least some of the jump scares. But yeah, they they all fall flat. At least you know for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would have even appreciated, I guess, more subtle stalking. <laughs> scenes <laughs> rather than the big jump scary scenes where like ah the person appears like um sort of in the vein of like what you'd see in insidious and stuff where it's like background stuff that you're not even looking for but it's mm -hmm. there like you know you'd see a reflection in a mirror and they don't draw attention to it like there's no music but if once you spot it you're like oh Ooh. shit <laughs> yeah it's happening yeah. um i would have appreciated more stuff like that where it's very clear the person is being followed it's not necessarily an urgent follow but like mm -hmm. they're doomed yeah. Right. Like in the original grudge with yeah, exactly. Sir Michelle Geller, where she was literally stalked by the spirit. Yeah. And you know, and you get some really good, like scary scenes from that one. Oh yeah. <sighs> yeah. Absolutely. Very, the grudge was just in a rush in this movie. It was just yeah. knocking them out. <laughs> also, you know, I felt like it jumped around quite a bit. Mm -hmm. and it felt really incohesive at least yeah until yeah. you Absolutely. get to, what three quarters of the way into the movie yeah. and then it starts totally. lining up and you're like that's a long time to <laughs> sit here yeah. just scratching your and head absolutely they do that in the grudge too but like the whole point is to reveal at the end like who the person in the hoodie is um so it's supposed to be confusing whereas mm -hmm. this time 
it doesn't really have to be confusing at all. No. Like it doesn't serve a purpose. No, absolutely. You're so right. And it's it's more of sort of like, okay, I wanted to tell these three stories yeah. and that's it. It wasn't a case of they work together and they feed off each other. It was just like, this is what's happened in this house. Enjoy these three stories. I'm mm -hmm. feeling very lazy today, so I'm not even going to patch them together really well. I'm just going to do it. And let's be fair, in their own rights, the stories are pretty good, especially the old people's, the old couple's story is just so creepy when she's in the kitchen and she's like trying At to cut vegetables oh, and her fingers are missing. And then the husband's dead in the, in the lounge. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, amazing. Spectacular. Great scene. That, that, that scene actually um, was the only scary scene that I could tell in the whole movie. It was <laughs> killing oh, right. and you just did not expect yeah. it whatsoever. No. Yeah. Also, it like stars my favorite character of the whole yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. The, gosh, what's her name? She's got such a calming voice. Um, L Lin is Shay? It is it Lynn no, Shea? No. No. The um Oh um the Jackie Weaver. Lady. Yeah. Uh, she was great. I love yeah. her voice. I could listen to her and AS <laughs> ASMR and just yeah. go to sleep mm -hmm. and be like, girl, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not sure, like for those scenes specifically, I don't know. I felt like a lot of the people didn't react like people would. Mm -hmm. Like, it, so she's a euthanasia, like bedside specialist. Um, and she goes to this house and she like has to say to the husband, listen, your wife can't actually consent to this. So I can't like follow through with this procedure. You knew the rules. Mm. Um, so, you know, that would be her cue to go, but instead she like goes to the grocery store and decides to make dinner and sleep over, which is for a professional is really bizarre. Yeah. It's um, really she's strange. not a caretaker. And then the police woman walks in like months later and sees that like this woman's like cut off her fingers, which by would have gotten septic way so before quick. the police woman walked in. <laughs> like way before she'd be oh, yeah. so dead <laughs> um but she sees this woman with the fingers and she runs out whereas like you wouldn't actually do that as a cop you'd be like oh this is clearly a case of like dementia and this mm. woman's not well and she's like injured you wouldn't run out you'd like call for backup sure but then like stay with the woman to make mm. sure she's not harming herself like i don't know there are a lot of scenes like that where i was like this is a very strange way Choice. for someone to react to this situation because they're not supposed to know they're in a scary movie yeah yeah exactly um what i also found really confusing too was that she was she was asking for for permission to stay with her and be comfort and then yeah. literally the first thing she's like, <laughs> let me get out of this house. Yeah. <laughs> literally right yeah. after that, as soon as they show her the bedroom and, yeah. and then, and then what poor lady, yeah. I just, I, she, you know, I love Lynn Shane. I love J John Cho, but I honestly think that if they had preserved her character, I think mm. it could have helped yeah. quite a Definitely. bit. Her, Definitely. Definitely. Um, I love the way that they wrote her, which mm -hmm. is, which interestingly enough, like most of the characters kind of come off kind of flat and really, yeah. totally, yeah. And they all have like this traumatic backstory and you're just yeah. kind of like exhausted by the time you like meet, after yeah. you're done meeting yeah. them, you're like, is anyone happy here? Like <laughs> <laughs> Did did either of you look up what the disease was? Because when they mentioned it, when they mentioned the baby had that disease, like they they used the acronym. They didn't give the full thing or like oh, explain yeah. what it was about. So like I didn't know how much to care. So then I like I looked up the disease. I don't know if either of you looked up the disease. What was the what acronym did they what was it again? It was like ADL, I think. Oh, because like later on I was like, did they mean ALS? Because that like is much later in life i don't I, like i don't know but so adl yeah yeah so it was it was adl i'm just i'm i'm going i'm going back onto my my google i'm looking at my history which is always a risky thing to do isn't it um wait can we, we can guess first it. can we guess <laughs> what it means okay go go go, go wait wait it. let me get um attack <laughs> defense <laughs> uh lover 
This just attack sounds like an lover. American football position. Yes, attack defense lover. Or and alternatively, I was, I was I was more thinking it was uh, was a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> <laughs> I play Idio. Huh? <laughs> As a trap card. <laughs> beautiful oh no three thousand hit points um okay well i made a mistake it was it was ald so it would be attack lover defense yeah oh, um, attack lover defense <laughs> well in that case let me think attention lying deficit um, so you have a so, deficit with both lying and attention yes i was about to say so it's trump that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> only in reverse <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How about you, Simone? What do you think ALD is? Um, oh God, I'm terrible. My mind just draws a complete blank when I'm given <laughs> letters to fill in. I can't do it. I'm not improvisational that way. Please don't do this to me. Okay, I apologize. I'll I'll I'll, I'll get you get you out of your misery. So it's adrenoleukodystrophy. Uh, adrenoleukodystrophy uh, okay. and it's a, it is a stone cold bummer that's for sure it's a rare genetic <laughs> condition that causes the buildup of a very long chain of fatty acids in the brain uh, when they accumulate they destroy the protective myelin sheath around nerve cells responsible for brain function uh, so basically it just eats you from the inside and causes you to have lower brain function which is not ace but you know it's... what at least they did their research and they found like a real disease because in a lot of <laughs> movies they just like um makeup stuff like in the <laughs> what the amazing spider-man 2 oh yeah um <laughs> where they just like made up some uh degenerative disease that the dude mm -hmm. had and couldn't even be bothered to think of a real one <laughs> they might have well have just called it goblin aria since he was gonna become the <laughs> green goblin but no they weren't even that imaginative um, I really like the music in this. Um, you know, a, a lot of like a horror, a horror movie like is quite dependent on good music. And I actually did think they did some really good sound effects and some really good music in this. And, and you mm. know, it wasn't as scary as it could have been, but it was still worked really well for the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so, so let's move on then to the next one. But yeah. before so we do... what is everyone seeing that could have saved it? What we do, uh, every episode is at this stage, we start, we think about a scene that could have saved it from the movie that would have made it better. However, uh, it doesn't necessarily have, have to be a single scene. Often we play very fast and loose with that rule. It could be a change of the whole movie, change of a specific character, change of a plot line, just whatever you think would have made the movie better. So while you're thinking about it, Jump to Simone. What do you think? What's uh, a scene that could have saved this bad boy? Um, I mean, I think we've talked about this already, but I really just wanted characters that acted like real people would <laughs> yeah. act. Because mm -hmm. objectively, it is like a really, obviously, it's a scary concept. This idea of this like yeah. enraged force that travels almost like a virus, like with whoever it comes into contact with. And there's really mm -hmm. nothing you can do once it gets a hold of you. Like that's scary enough. Mm -hmm. um but i feel like it would be scarier if you had people who were oblivious and did do normal human things uh yeah. when faced with certain situations and tried to do their best and i mean they die anyway um yeah i just i don't know i would have enjoyed it more i feel like i would have gotten a lot more immersion out of it rather than being mm -hmm. like wait but okay he's having this very serious conversation with their wife about whether they should keep their baby over the phone while a child <laughs> sleeps next to him. <laughs> that seems appropriate. Yeah, normal normal adult stuff, normal parent yeah. stuff. Everyone would do that. Come As on. one would. <laughs> Have you know that I love abortion? <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk on talk about it over the phone, make those decisions. <laughs> That's how I uh, stay stay uh, you know stay out of motherhood. <laughs> <laughs> It's called multitasking. Multitasking. <laughs> yes. And, and how about you, Professor? What's uh, what's your scene that could have saved it? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know if it could be saved, honestly. <laughs> um, I will say that the lead, the lead, the lead actress, the main mm -hmm. character, mm -hmm. I actually had no problems with her. I liked her. I really mm. liked how down to earth she was. Mm -hmm. I just wish that they developed her more. Yeah. 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 And also include Sir Michelle Geller because she's the queen. So 
I Why can't believe that she wasn't invited to come back. Like even as like the creepy little Asian ghost girl. Like I mean, I yeah, know it would be give, it, give me a creepy it, but... Sarah Michelle Geller. All I know yeah. is that Sarah Michelle Geller could totally save this movie just with her own star power. Yeah, yeah, just by showing up. <laughs> and if she's watching this right now, <laughs> Sarah, famously a friend of our podcast. Yes. Oh, she she can't stop talking about our podcast, oh so she'll hear this. Promise it's you. It's actually embarrassing. We're like, no, Sarah, you can't come on the podcast. Oh, yeah, she's dang. she's uh, she's too thirsty, so we leave, we leave her on, on red. Um, I've got to I've got to piggyback off of yours to be honest with you, and I completely agree. I feel like they put way too much attention on the uh, side stories and didn't develop the main story enough. Like I understand, like we're supposed to care about the main character because like her husband died of cancer and it's all terrible and things suck and whatever but that's all the development we get there's just nothing else to it we don't even see like her and her partner become like really good friends or anything like that it's literally she is a vehicle and a vessel for the other two stories yeah. and it would have been cool if like she had lived in the house and the stuff was happening to her and she has to race yeah. against time to stop the grudge from killing her and things like that and but yeah. there was just it lacked the, the flavor there was just nothing to yeah. it yeah not to mention uh, that there was no development of relationship between her and her son. So yeah. we yeah. completely forget that he even exists until, <laughs> you know, the end. And he's, yeah. and then we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, she's, you got a she's, kid. And she set her son on fire, you know? I but mean, she knew it wasn't him. That somehow. Was, I thought that was a little bit well done because they, you know, they give you that very obvious Chekhov's gun at the beginning of mm -hmm. what do we do when we're scared? And you're like, wow, <laughs> closing your eyes. I wonder how they could use this clever device. It's, it was, uh, it was flawless. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> And then to finish off, what we do is we say, would we watch it again? Uh, just so that our, our listeners will know whether they should, you know, take the two hours out of their time to watch this film. Uh, is it so really two hours long? I think it is. I think it's damn close. Oh I think God. it's 150. Yeah, it's quite a long film. Uh, so <laughs> so I feel like that's your your uh, your feelings towards it. So, so you would totally watch it again, right? Well, I'm going to let you in on the secret. I watched it in theaters when it first came out before COVID Damn. happened. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then I watched it again for the podcast. So I already did Thank watch it so again. Much. So I Welcome guess to our um, world. there's your answer. <laughs> Damn. You'd watch it again, but only if you were guesting on a podcast. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't anybody just watch the worst <laughs> movie just so they could guest star, you know? <laughs> you are saying all the right things we'll we'll be having you on again when you say things like that you make us I feel would, like we're important i would absolutely love that honestly <laughs> and how about you simone would you would you watch this again if i want to watch a grudge movie mm -hmm. this ain't it no yeah no i would watch the smg one or the oh, yeah. original juwan yeah yeah. I even really liked, I liked The Grudge too, actually. I found I kind of enjoyed it. I didn't expect to. It was really silly. But yeah, I'd rather watch any of those than this mm -hmm. one. The, I, the, <laughs> the sad thing is I hated the second Grudge movie, but I still like it more than this new remake. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad this film is. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hard no from everyone hard, hard no. yeah well to be fair i would i'm actually i'm gonna be watching it again uh this winter because i'm now taking a class i've just started a, new, a, a class with the open university uh called the rise and fall of sam raimi and uh this is this is towards the end you know we come to I like i can't tell if you're joking <laughs> I, can't, I have no idea <laughs> How good would that be if I was a, a, a film lecturer and I was doing a class called The Rise and Fall of Sam Raimi? It would I'd be attend. spectacular. It would be so good. We would watch all three Spider-Mans and then finish with this. <laughs> Chad, can I ask you a serious question? Yes, of course. Who is holding you at the by the barrel of the gun on the other side of that <laughs> camera to say these things? <laughs> it's Sam Raimi himself. <laughs> It's an uh, obvious tracking shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's friend of the podcast Sam Raimi, who is he is definitely the most lovely guy in the world. Who, who especially because uh, in the last mini minisode, I really trashed the Evil Dead, so mm -hmm. uh, oh, he the, loves us. <laughs> oh, Evil Dead! How dare you? Oh, I love it. It's fine. 
Wait, what are we talking about? Are we talking about the original one or yeah, yeah, the yeah, remake? Yeah, yeah, the 1985. Oh, such a treasure. But but I give do. your reason, Simone. Like, let's be fair. <laughs> like, it, it was a product of its time. It and, was a product of why. its time. Like, I and, get it. I understand how it's revolutionary. Blah, blah, blah. I just didn't like it. Did you no realize asked, like, that the majority of the movie was shot in one single shot? No way. Very cool. That's cool. Really cool. Again, I had nothing against the <laughs> filmmaking or cinematography. It was just that nobody acted like an, a person would. <laughs> well, there was that really rapey scene with the trees that I didn't enjoy. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't do anything for me. Well, as we see, the Evil Dead overtook the grudge, so we know which, which one's <laughs> well, better. Go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, on that on that very very sort of uh, Mexican standoff style note, shall we move on to uh, in the tall grass? So excited! Yeah, for let's do it. Oh, um, yes. so a synopsis for this movie is impossible. Hard. I was so excited. Like when you when I messaged you to say which one do you want to do, and you said that in the tall grass, I was like, thank <laughs> bejeebus, because there is no physical way that I would have been able to write a, a, a synopsis for this. Yeah, so guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk through who our cast is, kind of sort of beginning, middle, and end it, and mm -hmm. just encourage people to watch it for themselves. Because <laughs> I'm only human. Yeah, yeah, this is... <laughs> and I believe in is, you, Simone. A lot of you this can... is done like through like a visual storytelling and implication, so I can't like... No, no. Written word does not tra translate into this film. And especially not for a summary. Like, we'd really need to no. do a deep dive on, like, yeah. my theories. <laughs> <laughs> you would need, like, a blackboard behind you and just, like, writing yeah. things down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <I'm over> here. <laughs> so, in the tall grass, we start the movie by following a very pregnant Becky, played by Layla D'Oliveira, and her brother Cal, played by Avery Witted. They are driving to San Diego, um, presumably where Becky's going to have her baby. On the trip, they stop next to a field full of very tall grass, and they hear a child, Tobin, played by Will Boyd Jr., um, screaming for help. They run in and are immediately lost in this ever-moving maze of the tall grass. While they are lost, they meet Ross, played by our fave, Patrick Wilson, uh, who is a creepy dude who you clearly cannot trust, and he is Tobin's dad. They later run, briefly run into Natalie, uh, Ross's wife, played by Rachel Wilson. Um, and much later on, they are followed by Travis, who is the father of Becky's child, who is trying to find Becky desperately. What follows is a huge time loop, a weird grass people, God type rock thing. <laughs> um, and Travis is the one who picks up that this is a time loop that they have to break out of. They fight Ross. They do everything they can. Travis eventually touches the rock of knowledge in the middle of the field, which he knows will mean that he can never leave the field, but it means he helps Tobin leave the field and stop Becky and Cal from entering the field again in the time loop, breaking the time loop and saving everyone. Maybe the end. Wait. So do you have a scene that could uh sorry a, a clip hanger for this one because this is this is again one of those tough boys oh no no it's not tough at oh. all it's oh. the cliffhanger is this and it's just patrick wilson being his best creepy self mm -hmm. um talking like when he's kind of evangelize evangelizing about the grass oh, and yeah. like all it wants is to give us knowledge so great loved uh -huh. him in this yeah unbelievable Wilson. character <sighs> like what a body oh, and then also yeah. holy shit what a great performance dude is on yeah. point especially because like in the conjuring movies he's like kind of a nice guy like he's a bit mm -hmm. of the hero so it's really cool to see him just be like evil <sighs> mm -hmm. <sighs> i have so much <laughs> to say about sighing. him oh my god he okay so patrick wilson he oh god I hate to say this, but mm. the movie was about him and only him. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not wrong. You're not he wrong. He carried that movie on his broad shoulders. Uh, Tobin you know what? Fuck off. Who gives yes. a shit about a kid named Tobin? Uh, 
fuck Tobin. Who names we don't child care. Tobin. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same family as Mitt Romney. <laughs> Okay, this one Mitt and this one Tobin. Are we convinced there isn't a Tobin Romney out there? Well, I can check in for I can check that for you. You'll call your dear friends the Romneys and just the, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So 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 yes, you are one hundred percent right. Please continue with your with your thoughts and, and gushings on, mm. on him because you're you're one hundred percent on point. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know what? Something about this movie, even though it wasn't, as you say, the best movie, yeah. Patrick Wilson literally did that. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, I feel like he was two characters, actually. He was the character that came before the field and then mm-hmm. the character who was the rock, possessed by yeah. the rock. Mm. And... Both of them are so interesting, so intriguing, and you just yeah. want to know more. Mm-hmm. And the story that he tells, you know, even though it's scripted and everything, but the story that he tells, and it's so like unbelievable, you can yeah. still believe it because he's telling yeah. it to you with such yeah. conviction. Yeah. He's he has such conviction to of what he's saying and yeah. you just want to just keep going along with him for this yeah. ride. It's so, such a weird ride, but <laughs> yeah, I'm down for it. No, oh, daddy, take me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, I especially liked, I thought the scene that did very well for me um, is where he's leading um, Travis and them like through the grass and he's talking about like how he used to be in a band Mm -hmm. and he had these dreams and you're like this is a very weird conversation for someone to have when they're trapped in an ever-moving maze Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's a totally normal thing but you're still like so unsettled by the character because you're like this is just like so surreal and bizarre and the people like you know who he's talking to are like are you serious right now my guy like (laughs) our dreams of being in a band are like far beyond what's happening right now so what would you do if he asked you to touch the rock oh you know what i honestly wouldn't have even hesitated i'd be like yeah it's a stupid (gasps) fucking rock like i I would totally here i touched the rock i would (laughs) I would do the same thing. Oh my God. You, you guys are just, you guys <laughs> are going to get murdered. Dead. You guys are so murderable. I mean, you know. Chad, that is my brand. That is your guys' brand, you know. And I'm, my I'm, last I'm, name is Murder, so. There you go. I mean, you know, I'm literally a Chad. I don't die in yeah. horror movies. I'm the American dream, the guy who goes on to tell the story. I'm the always the one who survives. Traditionally, the Chad does die in the slasher movie. Oh, if you okay, ever knew maybe. Chad. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe I, i'm mistaken then okay yeah no you you are right i'm, I'm now remembering cabin in the woods when uh when um what's his face dies yeah um, i don't want to yeah. i don't mean to be the one to break this too but you're not final girl material <laughs> bitch oh. neither am i i mean i guess it's that not leaves like me I'm, coming yeah. from like i mean clearly I mean, we know who the final girl yeah, is yeah that's but true. if we, no. but if all three of us touch the rock, then we can't leave. So. That's true. But would we want to? No, mm-hmm. I think if, if this was the party happening in the tall grass, don't want to leave. I'm happy to stay. Yeah. That, My theory. That being said, though. Yeah. If someone, if, like, if I was like in the grass and I knew how to leave, and I was like, I don't want to leave, but someone offered me like a hot shower. That is the thing. Yeah, I would need a. I would I'd need be a out of there, there so fast. I'd need a shower there, and then that's that's all I need. It's yeah, so yeah, yeah. dirty. My theory with this film is okay. that The Rock, okay, this is this is where I'm coming from because Stephen King, his universe, like all his books come yeah. like within the same universe. So my theory with this one is that The Rock is actually the asteroid slash spaceship that Pennywise the Clown came to Earth in um, because that's how he came to Earth um, and that's where the evil came from. So that's my thinking is that this is where he uh. landed and then exploded, he came out and The Rock just has residual evil energy and that's what I'm vibing. That, that was my okay. theory, at least. Didn't the meteor crash in Maine? 
you're not you're probably not wrong and uh, <laughs> and i'm probably very wrong but you know like i'm just trying to tie tie things together i like i like little little nice little bows yeah. on my stories well but guess think... what it's landed in nebraska instead or something <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> chad wants it so so we're gonna do yeah it. <laughs> i think like so i actually really enjoyed this movie mm -hmm. um and when i read a lot of the reviews about it a big criticism was like at the end it doesn't make sense like there's no reason and stuff which i don't think is a valid criticism because i think that's the point like you're mm. supposed to leave it as something that's always going to be misunderstood or not understood and you're not supposed yeah. to get it and there's not supposed to be like a tidy origin a story yeah. um so i don't know that's how i felt i don't know about you guys i mean i had questions but i i i did enjoy the story and i did enjoy the ending um i'm i'm perplexed on what's gonna like I want to see what keeps happening like to leave yeah. it where it left it i was just like oh but i, I want so much more and y yeah so that was a bit tough to get around for me and then obviously when it starts with time travel i'm always less just a bit you know i always try yeah. to avoid you, trying we to struggle with the time loop yeah yeah but I'm, overall i completely agree with you time loops are or anything to do with time probably the hard one of the very hardest mm -hmm. things to, to bring into a cohesive story and yeah, it's absolutely. such a risk to take. You know? Totally. And on, you know, unfortunately, I know a lot of people didn't think the risk paid off, but honestly, I found it to be quite the mindfuck just to, mm. mm -hmm. and you know, trying to figure out the rules to this field through the, mm -hmm. watching this yeah. movie, and you know, jump, you know, as they, you know, they were jumping you know above the the grass right and then mm -hmm. they keep mm -hmm. every time they jump that up, was they, so cool they that was a great shot oh it's probably got to be my favorite shot of the whole movie yeah no yeah. it's a great yeah. moment mm. it's so cool yeah it's spooky is what it is mm -hmm. and yeah. if i was in a place like that i would be like well this is the end of where i am. <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is the end of me because i know that things are not what they appear here so <laughs> yeah I mean. and I, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing like i think i think that is the problem and i think that's why probably a lot of people had a lot of issues with this film is purely on the basis that with big horror fans which we all are you like your rules you like especially when it's like mm. a really interesting concept like this you're like okay cool so these are the rules you're in the field it's in a time loop but there is a way to get out or you know the clown yeah. does this and it feeds off your fear and so you can beat it this way and and so there is a strict set of rules that everyone adhere to adheres to and so long as you adhere to the rules you can get out um and then this was just like nah fuck your rules bud i i don't give a shit i'm just gonna do what i want and yeah. you can try and figure it out but if you don't i'm gonna eat you yeah and that was it i enjoyed that <laughs> i i liked it i did enjoy it like even if like like confessor says it was a complete mind fuck at the end like huh. yeah i mean oh. because also like that's life isn't it right like you follow the <laughs> rules and you still <laughs> get fucked over sometimes get your head crushed in by a beautiful white man by your husband <laughs> you know there is one very disturbing scene that i thought in this movie i thought mm -hmm. to be really disturbing and i thought really added probably even more into mm. the movie and that was the part where like the roots uh, yeah in the field yeah. were people yeah, yeah. Loved that it. was that was just a lovely little thing to include and mm -hmm. i love that they didn't explain it they weren't like oh it's all the ones Ugh. who can't like it's left up to you to figure it out mm -hmm. it was oh you yeah know what that it, was great you know what it reminds me of is that one um hell, you know norse mythology and hell you mm -hmm. know hell the yes. goddess hell and niflheim she was said that the the pavement or the roads were people's heads that she stepped on yeah. And that's kind of what really, like, when I watched that scene, I was like, oh my God, they're in Niflheim. <laughs> yeah, that's a great comparison, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it was, it was fantastic. Like, and from that point as well, I think the visuals of this film were exceptional. Like mm -hmm. the fact that you've got like the over overhead crane shots of like the grass and everything and it's mm -hmm. moving and it kind of looks like people are moving through it, but it's also could be the wind and then it could be the grass god people. And it's just, it's just very visually stunning 
the whole way through yeah. because and, and to work within that space of okay you've got no background to work with you're in green yeah. the whole time that's all you get that's really impressive that is really yeah. really impressive to do yeah and I liked um what's the boyfriend's name Travis like his little um, yeah. his little arc where he ends up yeah. like saving her in the end I was like that's actually this is a love story everyone <laughs> <laughs> still better than Twilight still better than Twilight <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, now we have to ask: Are you an Edward or a Jacob fan? Oh Lord, that's, that's oh. the question you got to ask. <laughs> We've never asked a guest that. Before. <laughs> okay, well and now it will become a staple. <laughs> I know, right? God, I hate even admitting this, but Just I am it. Team Jacob. Fuck yeah, you are. And that's you are. And the fact that and the fact that my brother's name is Jacob is not does not make it weird, okay? <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, 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 no. But not weird. I have to say that where that werewolves are sexy. Oh and, yeah. Oh yeah. At least sexy. Yeah. Wait, I'm all into mm. that like that hairy, you know, hairy Sweaty. man. Yeah. And just mm. yeah, the guy uh, who can chop wood with axes and that kind of vibe. Who wants I mean, a pale but sparkling who, in the daytime? Seriously, I was literally about to say, who would want a sparkly, <laughs> a sparkly pale twink when mm -hmm. you can have a beautiful thick bear? Yeah. Like, oh, and, obviously. And, and let me tell you, broad chest in the firelight. <laughs> like, let's go. <laughs> Taylor Lautner, I have to tell you, really grew up to be one fine man. I have to well, say. Oh, that was yes. all, and and this is a is a good fact for you to know. That was actually all thanks to to Twilight, because in between Twilight One and Twilight Two, he was told if he didn't bulk up, he wasn't allowed to come back. So the only reason we got super hot Taylor Lautner is because of Twilight. So good old fashioned Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't. I totally don't live here in Hollywood at all. <laughs> yeah, who's got a gun to your head now? <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> I, I thought I thought we were gonna get a lot more pushback on the Jacob thing. I'm so glad that all three of us are in agreement. I mean, to be fair, when I was like a 13 year old girl reading the books, I was obviously an Edward girl. But mm -hmm. you know, we matured. But you grew up. You grew yeah. the fuck up and uh, realized what was good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Well, that was the tangent of tangents, if I do yeah. say so myself. Um, what is everyone seeing that could have saved it? I'll give you a bit of time as well. Again, Confessor, I'll go first this also, time for you. I mean, yeah. with a time loop, how do you insert a scene? Yeah, there is no scenes in this film, and that's what's beautiful mm. about it. Um, I just said, lean into it more. I want more fighting in mm. the grass, uh, gr within the grass, and like yeah. I want to see them sort of divided into factions. So some people mm. are with the ev evangelical grass people, and some people are against them, and then you've got the divide yeah. between the brother and the husband, Travis. And like I want them in factions, like yeah. staying in different parts of the grass, um, sort of like Lord of the Flies kind of vibes, and then like sure turn against each other that's kind of where i wanted it everyone's go. got their like dead thing that they hang out around yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i love it you uh, know what about you oh um yeah <laughs> um i i would say this is the complete like opposite from the grudge um mm. i kind of feel like we could use some more characters in this movie yeah yeah um i feel like we really get to know these characters and we have plenty of time to hear them interact with each other and show mm -hmm. what they're about. Yeah. I just, and you know, and kind of what Chad said was, you know, had there been more people, I feel like those battle lines could be drawn like side, you know, those who sided with the rock and those who sided with freedom. Yeah. You know? mm. I, I, it could really, the, the potential of the movie to bring a philosoph to bring some sort of, some sort of philosophy into the movie about interconnectedness but at what cost yeah you know? oh that's a good point mm. um mm. i like it <clears throat> one thing i um was a little confused by this movie was at least watching it was i thought it was the grass that was evil yeah but mm. then you don't find out until at the end that it's the rock that's controlling the field and then you're kind of left like wondering what is this movie really about? Yeah. <laughs> is it about yeah. the grass or is it about the rock? Yeah. And yeah. Had they, I feel like had they brought in, explained the rock a little bit or brought it in a little mm. sooner, mm. then we would have yeah. helped. It, I think it would have helped. We, we would, yeah. our discovery process of this movie and the field and the way it acts and the, mm. and the laws and its yeah. laws could 
you know, it, I think if we brought in The Rock a lot sooner, it would have helped a lot. You yeah. Know, wouldn't, we wouldn't yeah. be so confused most of the movie. You know? Yeah. I, no, your so story it, critiquing chops are really showing this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, I told you I have opinions. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly, I'm a fan of your opinion. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> they lean in my direction, so. Yes. It's, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, it all worked for you, didn't it? It worked out really well for me, so I'm, I can't really. I'm absolutely waiting for like whoever got second place to come out with like nepotism bullshit of being like, well, she only won because then, you know, she promised that Confessor like, would go I'm on the like, podcast. I'm like oh, fully gosh. aware that also Confessor might have just really liked my style of writing. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think I was the best writer in that competition or anything. But oh, also, but you were. But my competitor. My can die mad about it to be honest yeah like, haters haters gonna hate 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 they were great i loved say. them mm -hmm. um yeah. but yeah like it's one judge um mm -hmm. i think you did a really great job but like there was always going to be some element of like personal preference in that uh which is fine it, yeah it's a, I mean, it's a writing competition of course that first story that you put in it oh my titties and <laughs> I'm not the only one who thought that either. I had so many people See? message me saying, oh my God, that story is amazing. No. So I'm going to tell you that I literally thought that that story, I, I could literally read it in like a newspaper or in some sort of magazine. No. Like it was publishable, literally. Um, I read it out loud to my roommate and he was like, <laughs> Why is that not published? And I'm like, I don't know, girl, but Stop we're- Stop it. But- I'm like warm. Yeah. You I'm, see, you're such a good freaking writer, dude. Stop like, it. Amazing. I, amazing. I knew, I knew the kind of girl you were gonna be when I read that story. <laughs> there and you go. I know you had your ups and downs through, through the whole, like, through the whole competition, but I knew you would get there, you know, and you pulled through. <laughs> like there, there was a rough patch in the middle there that uh, <laughs> just it, the funny part, to happen. The funny part was that even during your low your low points, your stories are still really good. It yeah. just happened that you know someone just had other to people be did just great jobs, barely a notch above you, you know, for for you know one or two yeah. challenges. But man, I I will say that. Uh, you know a side point like if simone you put out like a book i would be the first person to be there to buy it one day <laughs> one day we were all waiting for it simone you need to you need to get on that shit. And, i know i know <laughs> and also if i had some money i would give you some for winning just because Thank you. <laughs> i mean I should be your... giving you the money. Your critiques <laughs> so, like literally so helpful. Um, well, thank it, was, you. it was really, really great. <laughs> like the whole competition to get me writing was fantastic. And then like how much I grew and improved the whole time was like super, super fun. Well, that makes me happy go. to hear. Yeah. And you're and you're running, I believe you're running a, a second phase as well later. So we'll, we, we, we can plug that at the end and we'll yeah, also, for, for all of our, our listeners who are writers as well, we'll, uh, we'll include the link in the show notes so you guys can mm -hmm. sign up and, uh, and, and, you know, maybe follow, follow in Simone's spectacular footsteps. Um, Do it. Yeah, it's, it's so Simone, fun. Everyone it's had really a great fun. time. Yeah. Simone had a great time. She there was always messaging me saying, oh my God, like, thank you. you know? I think I also messaged her about <laughs> bitching about the theme like every week. She, and you know what? She did. And that's, <laughs> that's the part of the part of you that also, also like made me really like you, like humanize you too, like as a person. Oh, really? It was because you had like these really funny opinions about things and i was like <laughs> all right girl <laughs> she's really feeling her own today but we're gonna do it 
<laughs> my poor boyfriend throughout the whole competition had to deal with like my tortured artist self of being like, I hate this story. The story is garbage. I hate everything about it. And every time I submitted a story, I was like, well, this is the draft that I hate the least. So I guess it's going out there. And then like, I'd win the round and he'd be like, I thought you hated that draft. <laughs> I was like, mm. it, it was fine. You don't understand non-writer boyfriend. You don't understand you don't my get, process, which is you don't get the on hating it. Outrageous. No, I mean my whole boyfriend. I was annoying my boyfriend the whole time too. I'm like, oh my god, I have like eight stories to critique, and I have homework to do, and oh gosh. Yeah. And you gave like still... such detailed critiques as well. Like you went oh. in. Mm. <laughs> I know the the. All I really wanted to do was to have a good time with a bunch of writers, <laughs> read a bunch of cool stories, and which you know, there were many. There were so many good stories, and I, uh, I invite everyone to go check everyone out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. not just Simone, but everyone. No, They're so like, good. There's, there was some great stuff. The great yeah. ideas. No, spectacular. Oh, oh gosh. Chad, I, I hope that one day you'll you'll uh, pick up writing. Yeah, and... Chad. Once well, um, I. Once you're I'm, done I'm, with I'm, a, I'm a writer as well, and I was I was going to apply for 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 round two, um, but I am I'm in the, currently in the middle of my masters, and it would just be a little too much to pick uh, up at this time. I was I was sewing. I had my I had my picture ready to do my five minute word vomit onto the thing, um, <laughs> and then I was just like I'm I'm gonna be far too. There's no physical yeah. way that I would be able to incorporate that into my life right now, especially like um, running a podcast and and yeah. and yeah, you take just, on a lot. Yeah, and and I want to. I really wanted to, but I think phase three will be my year. Phase three, if you oh. decide to do a phase three. Um, you know, I'm hoping. Um, you know, we're you know, it's we're still like getting up off the ground a bit. Mm. So I mean, getting finding new writers and stuff is proving to be quite the task. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're gonna. I'm gonna do the best I can, and I'm gonna make it work somehow. Yeah, so. that's the that's the attitude, yeah. pluggy attitude that will get you get you far. Okay, so so tangent yes, tangent sorry. aside, would, uh, <laughs> would, would all people... of us just praising each other? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> would y'all watch this uh, film again? I would. I would mm -hmm. so watch it again. Um, I I was really excited to watch it again for the podcast. I yes, liked it a lot, but yeah. I love Joe Hill, so I'll follow him anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know uh, who I mean, my my second favorite character of this movie was? Uh-huh. The dog. Oh, <laughs> little Freddy. Freddy, Freddy. Frankie. I, I am I'm a huge animal person and uh -huh. you're on the you right tell, podcast. If you tell people that I love animals, they wouldn't be that surprised. <laughs> I, I I hate people, you know. Oh yeah. So. People, are the worst. <laughs> people are people are junk. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, oh, no. The dog is so cute. I was so worried for the dog. <laughs> and I'm really glad that the dog was able to find a way out, but it kind of made you wonder why did the dog find a way out? Did the yeah. did the rock let the dog out, or did the or was it like a some loophole extra, in the lo in the rules? Yeah, you know? some extra animal sense or something, even that mm -hmm. the dog had. Because not even not even the rock would kill. Mm. A, a delightful dog like that it just wouldn't yeah it just it's oh i forgot i didn't do my scene that could have saved it oh shit sure. yeah okay <laughs> go, go, no, go I'll just into do it real that. quick <laughs> do it real quick and then we'll we'll move on <laughs> um i was thinking about like you know obviously the scene where patrick wilson like crushes his wife's head so gross so good so gross but like that's such an angry way to murder someone Mm -hmm. and they're not like really he's just kind of like oh the grass says you need to die or the rock says you need to die so like he kills her and it's interesting because when they first go into the grass he's like a normal dude but he's also clearly got a very short fuse yeah yeah and he's already like bitching about his wife as they go in but we never really see the escalation Mm -hmm. of that or like how their relationship changes over time while they're in the grass like they get separated mm -hmm. and then she shows back up at the rock and he's like kind of indoctrinated so he's like okay guess you have to die um and i don't know like i i think i also just wanted to see more of patrick wilson being like yeah. the creepiest Upgrading. dude in the world yeah um but i would have been cool to see like that relationship change because the movie kind of was 
secondarily about the relationships Mm -hmm. and how like we go through these cycles um even in like different scenarios a lot of the characters came to the same conclusions over and Mm -hmm. over again um and it would have been interesting to see that relationship with his wife as well Mm -hmm. i honestly would have loved to to see him on a murder spree just yeah. kill everyone yeah especially because we see him being <laughs> such a good guy all the time it would have been nice to just see him fuck shit up so yeah mm-hmm. absolutely completely agree but yeah this movie is fantastic and you know i think i think you know it, it got a bum rating and i don't know why and it's just not fair it's not fair people um, don't like things that they don't like understand get. Yeah, yeah, unless I mean, it's unless we, it's like we super say that fancy. like total hypocrites because we were very critical about her- hereditary. Yeah, and true oh, of you life. were. Oh, yeah, man. we didn't like it. We we really didn't, didn't like, like it. I don't oh. like movies where I have to Google the ending. Yeah, it, well, I, I think like I talked about that. Make you think that I am an intellectual at heart. You know, being the All Aquarius. Right. Sorry, being the Aquarius that I am. You know, <laughs> so intellectual. And I love a movie that will make you think. And In the Tall yeah. Grass really did that. Mm. And so did Hereditary. Mm-hmm. But In the Tall Grass made you think. You know? Yeah. And then we'll do our outsides. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been the most fun having you on. So Have you had fun? fun? Yes. So much fun, actually. I don't want it to end. It's that's we made two new friends <laughs> this Halloween season, and it's just it's filling me with yeah. so much joy. I love it's this Halloween. Great. It's so good. It's so good, and we'll definitely have you oh. on. We'll have you on for so many things, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, just gonna be it's just gonna be so so it. good. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for inviting me back. Of course. Thank so where coming. can the where can the people find you? Tell us tell us where they can yeah. follow you and all the business. So you can follow me on Instagram at um, just confess a murder, um, just all one word. Um, and you can also find the subreddit for um, my r- horror writing competition, um, R Murder House, H A U S. Fantastic. And guys, thank you so much for listening. We really hope you're getting into a good spooky season. We're almost coming towards the end, which is a bit sad, but I think we've we've had a really good job. And uh, next week, we have such a nice surprise for you. It's going to be insane. We're not going to give anything away, no. uh, but it's just going to really hard, though. He's been working really, really hard on it. It's going to be, be super fun. Yeah, it's going to be really, really fun. Hey, so, Chad actually working hard. That's I mean, it's, this is the first time ever. It will he never defies the again. stereotypes. He's defying I'm, the stereotype of Chad. I'm fucking, I'm fucking exhausted. I'll never do this again. I'll never work <laughs> in my life ever again. It's As a white man, you shouldn't have to. No, I shouldn't have to lift my fingers. This is outrageous. This is this is why we employ people to do this stuff for us and then pay the minimum wage. Oh um, my. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, as we're saying, so let us know what you think of the spooky season. Who do you want to see as in terms of guests? Because as you can clearly see, we've got the cream of the crop. So, oh, yeah. you know, who, who else can we get that you would enjoy seeing on the podcast? Let us know. And where can they do that, Simone? Sarah Michelle um, Geller. Hey, yes. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll she'll never make it. No, we, we refuse. <laughs> I mean, if you actually got Sarah Michelle Geller, I would literally scream. I would cry. <laughs> I would be like, let me be a part of it. Yeah. I would spend the whole episode just sobbing. I would cry because she is my girl. I love just, it. Uh, so uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, you can contact us on Facebook and Instagram at Fresh Tomatoes Podcast, on Twitter at yes. Fresh Tomatoes MP. Sarah, please email us at Fresh Tomatoes Podcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to shout out your biggest fan, Confess Yeah. Murder. There you go. <laughs> so thank you thank you again guys for watching enjoy the rest of your halloween and as we say at the end of every episode we love you and there's nothing you can do about it we love you and there's nothing you can do about it you can say it you gotta you gotta say it and there's nothing you can do about it Ooh, it's creepy it's great i love it it's everything still felt the love though (laughs) it was great all right goodbye felt the love (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, everyone. (laughs) Bye, everybody.